Good morning, everyone, and, and thank you, Andres, for that very kind uh, introduction. Uh, it's always a little bit embarrassing to hear my resume uh, read, so thanks for bearing with us. But I also want to thank Maura and Notre Dame's uh, Keogh School for hosting us today and for their partnership with the Department of State. Friends and colleagues, it is a distinct pleasure for me to join you, a diverse and brilliant group of practitioners, experts, and advocates to engage on di digital technologies and their impact. It's no secret that digital technology is transforming our world, and opportunities like this symposium allow us to turn lessons learned into best practices and to leverage digital tools to defend democratic institutions and principles. Of course, technology has the potential to do tremendous good, to advance sustainable development, civic engagement, and access to government services and, of course, information. Globally, this potential translates into tremendous progress across continents and oceans. In Nigeria, engineering students are enhancing their learning through online tutorials posted on YouTube by educators in India. US-based blockchain startups are collaborating with real estate registries in Brazil and Ghana to build secure record-keeping systems for land and property registration to protect against fraud and corruption. Meanwhile, tactile ballots and audio guides are enabling blind voters in the Republic of Georgia to vote independently and privately. And yet, we are acutely aware that behind every positive use of technology, there are malign actors seeking to leverage the same tools to stifle democratic progress and repress populations. Nobel laureate and our keynote speaker, the indomitable Maria Reza, knows this all too well. A champion of digital technologies to connect, inform, and strengthen freedom of expression online in the Philippines and beyond. Maria has faced intensive digital surveillance and online harassment. During an interview with Secretary Blinken in June 2022, she warned us that the growing misuse of tech leaves frontline users increasingly defenseless against digital attacks. Maria reminds us that what happens online is what happens in the real world. So impunity online is impunity offline. I could not agree more. In our interconnected world, impunity online has profound ripple effects. States are watching and learning from one another, adapting, building on techniques to repress human rights and hamper democratic governance. They shut down the internet, target election infrastructure with malicious cyber activities, and sponsor AI-facilitated disinformation campaigns and synthetic content, all aimed at shifting election results and suppressing the political participation of marginalized groups. Now, in this super year of elections, when more than half of the world's population has the potential to vote, the impacts of mis- and disinformation, simply put, could be catastrophic. If what happens online happens in the real world, democracies will be tested in ways that were unimaginable just a few years ago. And for that very reason, the Biden administration has prioritized support for technology that enhances democratic governance and improves our daily lives. To that end, we're taking steps domestically and abroad to achieve an affirmative vision for digital technologies in five key ways. First, our support for access to digital technologies truly spans the globe. At the Africa Leaders Summit here in Washington in December 2022, we committed to invest in digital transformation across the continent. Since then, the US Trade and Development Agency has funded eight feasibility studies to advance the implementation of over $1 billion in digital connectivity, clean energy, and healthcare infrastructure projects across the continent. 
Last April, USAID, in partnership with Prosper Africa, launched the Africa Tra Tech for Trade Alliance, which has facilitated some $274 million in long-term financing for affordable housing across West Africa that will also improve access to the internet. Second, we've made significant progress in protecting the open internet and advancing rights respecting digital technologies. Last October, President Biden issued an executive order on AI that establishes new standards for AI safety and security, protects Americans' privacy, advances equity and civil rights, stands up for consumers and workers, and promotes innovation. On its heels, the president signed another executive order to protect Americans' sensitive personal data from exploitation by countries of concern. As Vice President Harris has said, we have a moral, ethical, and societal duty to make sure that AI and digital technologies are adopted and advanced in a way that protects the public from potential harm and ensures that everyone is able to enjoy its benefits. Now third, we're taking a government-wide approach to counter the misuse of surveillance technologies, including commercial spyware. In addition to a 2023 executive order restricting US government use of commercial spyware that poses a threat to human rights or national security, the US Department of Commerce added four commercial spyware companies to the entity list for enabling human rights abuses. These actions send a strong signal that the United States will promote accountability for the misuse of, of surveillance technologies and those who furnish them to facilitate human rights abuses and the targeting of journalists, activists, and perceived critics. Just last month, Secretary Blinken announced a new visa restriction policy targeting individuals involved in or enabling the misuse of commercial spyware. Earlier this month, the US Treasury designated two individuals and five entities for their roles in developing, operating, and distributing commercial spyware technology used to target US citizens. Now, the fourth way we are advancing this affirmative vision for a di digital ecosystem is by advancing global understanding and action on the impacts of disinformation, including synthetic content on democracy and human rights. Through the new framework to counter foreign state information manipulation, we've partnered with nine like-minded governments to deepen cooperation, establish a common foundation, and support the development of resilient, fact-based e information ecosystems. Now, I think, Maria, you especially would be pleased to know that we're investing in independent media, independent media and digital literacy all over the world to encourage partners to support civil society efforts and to build resilience against disinformation throughout all segments of society. Ultimately, we need to increase multidisciplinary, multi-stakeholder empirical research on the impact of disinformation on democracy and human rights. And that's why symposia, discussions like today are so important. So I hope that all of you will, will further explore this topic today, and then you can please let me know what solutions you find. But finally, the fifth key way that we're working to advance our affirmative vision for digital technology is through working with strong, committed partners who share it. So one key avenue is through multiple summits for democracy. Since the very first in 2021, we've conveyed hundreds of leaders from government, civil society, and the private sector to strengthen democratic governance, protect human rights, and advance the fight against corruption with technology as a cross-cutting element. The summit's Technology for Democracy cohort, co-led by Estonia, the United Kingdom, and Access Now, has promoted the development and the governance of digital technologies to strengthen democracies in, and enhance human rights and fundamental freedoms. We have a separate information integrity cohort, co-led by Canada, Latvia, and the Alliance for Securing Democracy, 
which is highlighting best practices to strengthen a healthy information ecosystem. Since 2023, the US government has contributed over $31 million to the Surge and Sustain Fund for Anti-Censorship Technology, supporting 30 million users of circumvention tools, such as VPNs, just every month. This brings the total US contribution since the fund was established at the first Summit for Democracy to over $46 million. Now, the third Summit for Democracy, hosted by the Republic of Korea in just four short days, will demonstrate how diverse democracies are meeting the world's most pressing challenges and delivering for their citizens. I will proudly be there alongside Secretary Blinken and alongside Maria as well. For our part, the US government, we intend to galvanize multi-stakeholder participation in digital governance and commit them to combat the misuse of commercial spyware together with us. But before I leave for Seoul, I'm proud to share another vital way that we're working with our partners. Earlier this week, we released the first of its kind joint guidance with the European Union to advance our efforts through the uh, US-EU Trade and Technology Council to protect human rights defenders online. This guidance uh, outlines best practices online that platforms can take to identify, mitigate, and provide access to remedies for digital attacks targeting human rights defenders. Actions to promote democracy in our increasingly digitized world are not just incumbent upon states, though. Businesses also have an absolute responsibility to protect and respect human rights, human rights online and offline. So our hope is that private companies will utilize this guidance to better protect defenders and uphold this responsibility in line with the UN guiding principles on business and human rights. Global coalitions where governments work hand in hand with civil society, technical and private business stakeholders are promoting and protecting democracy worldwide. In, online, in, in line with our own commitments at the Summits for Democracy, the United States was honored to chair the Freedom Online Coalition for 2023. We were proud to develop and release with our partners there the guiding principles on government use of surveillance technologies, as well as publishing the donor principles for human rights in the digital age. The promise of digital technologies, including emerging tech, stands in stark contrast to the peril posed by their misuse in repressing human rights and limiting the exercise of fundamental freedoms. But let me repeat to you all, we have an affirmative vision. To get there, we call on governments and other key stakeholders to take these important actions going forward, to commit to open access to the internet and condemn shutdowns and network restrictions, to employ digital technologies more effectively to administer free and fair elections, to counter the misuse of commercial spyware and other surveillance technologies, to leverage all tools as governments to promote and incentivize respect for human rights by the tech sector in line with the UN guiding principles on business and human rights, and to develop, procure, and use AI technologies in a rights-respecting manner. In committing to these five actions and working together, we can advance the rights-respecting digital ecosystem that promises tech for the good of all. But we're standing on a precipice, an unprecedented moment in tech history with a unique opportunity to influence digital technologies. And it's truly our responsibility to rise to the occasion, filled with hope on technology's promise, but cleared eyed on the immense potential for misuse. By harnessing the power of digital technologies, we all can create more inclusive, informed, engaged, and ultimately successful democracies. So thank you all. <laughs>